All right, guys, hopefully these, this will be a quick review of some nail anatomy, especially when you're taking call. You're going to need to know this because you have a lot of quick hand emergencies that you can take care of, especially knowing the anatomy will help. First of all, perionychium means everything around the onychium. Onychium means little claw in Greek, so that includes the perionychium, the hyponychium, and the nail bed sometimes called the sterile matrix. Starting off with the perinicum, these are just the lateral nail folds that protect the lateral parts of the nail plate. The nail plate is the hard thing that you can feel and thump, and it's actually very strong, full of keratin. Sometimes you can get perinicule infections, particularly when you have, you go get a mani-pedi, and the instrument will push some bacteria into the perinicule fold, and you can get a perinicula, which needs to be drained or soaked and then monitored. Around the perinicula, you can see that there's an extension that's more proximal called the eponychium. This is the proximal nail fold. It has a dorsal and ventral surface. As you can see here from the sagittal view, the dorsal roof and ventral roof kind of provide a little home for the germinal matrix. We'll talk about that in a second. There's a big difference between the cuticle and the lunula. The lunula is this moon-shaped structure that you can see underneath the nail plate. That's actually the distal one-third of the germinal matrix. The cuticle is actually this thin layer of stratum corneum that's an extension of the dorsal epinicule fold. Let's talk a little about the germinal matrix because that's important stuff. That's always on test. The germinal matrix actually has a proximal and distal matrix component where 80% the proximal matrix is generating the actual nail plate. Notice how it grows in this nice curvy fashion so your nails look super fancy. The other distal matrix part is responsible for more of the ventral part. That's not important for you to know for test, surface, test points or anything like that, but just thought I would include it for completion. The germinal matrix basically has the fancy germinative epithelial cells, the stem cells, if you will, that make new nail, if, particularly if you were to lose one, but they're constantly turning over new differentiating keratinocytes that will form your nail plate. Slightly distal to that is the nail bed, sometimes called the sterile matrix. It's called the sterile matrix because it's not the germinal matrix, but it's supposedly sterile because the hyponychium, which again, the hyponychium means the part below or hypo, the nail, because this is, it's a continuation of the volar skin that's supposed to form a seal here at the nail plate and seal off the nail bed or sterile matrix, preventing any pathogens from entering, therefore making it sterile. So again, the nail bed which is distal to the germinal matrix is responsible for adherence of the nail plate and it actually provides some cells that contribute to the nail plate itself. In fancy terms, it's composed of dermal epithelial cells that contribute to the ventral surface of the nail and adherence of the nail plate. It's very vascular. This is where you also see splinter hemorrhages. For example, someone that's throwing septic emboli, uh, someone that has bacterial endocarditis. What's important to note is that there's no subcutaneous tissue that separates the nail bed or sterile matrix from the periosteum of the distal phalanx. So therefore, any fracture that's sitting below a laceration of the nail bed is therefore defined as an open fracture by default.